Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. Uh, and I also want to welcome you back uh, to to a, to a place we haven't been in quite some time, man. Back to to the Seaman's origin, uh, his room. I uh, did not have to go anywhere to watch tonight's movie, and uh, it is a, because it's a throwback movie, man. Uh, it's a movie I had to see before going. To go see a, uh, a film by the same name, a remake of this original movie from 1977. And I tell you, man, it, it's a shame that I haven't seen this yet. Right, It is a classic horror film um, that, that, that did some really big, uh, you know, inventive things uh, for the time. And, man, what a wonderful vision. I was so happy to watch this movie. Like I said, super disappointed in myself for not seeing it sooner than now. Uh, so pull up a chair, man, take a seat. I'm getting ready to dive into Dario Argento's 1977 Suspiria, the original Suspiria, as uh, Luca Guadagnino's version uh, remake of Suspiria uh, come, came out to most theaters this past weekend. And I tell you, man, I really dug the original movie a lot. Uh, and, it, and it has mostly to do with the man behind... Uh, the camera director Dario Argento, uh, who you know back then at this point in time, I think he had done five films, all of them um, you know from his uh, you know as an Italian director, uh, and in the genre of thriller. Uh, I think that the actual they actually had a word for it in Italy, uh, the Italian gallo genre, um, which you know he'd make these thrillers. And when he got to his sixth, he was like, you know what, I'm gonna change it up, man. I want to make this fantasy horror movie and he he created something that just did not work at the time it was a box office flop um but talk about cult following man suspiria like i said one of the all-time classics uh when you're talking horror and it was because of this fantasy look and feel he went for um both him and co-writer uh Daria Nicolodi, um, both really pulled on fantasy movies as, as points of inspiration. Uh, Nicolodi really, you know, stemmed off of um, things like Alice in Wonderland, whereas Argento was really kind of inspired by things like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and, and mostly that Technicolor experience that we got from a lot of fantasy type movies back in the day. So much so that he had his DP watch Snow White and the Seven Dwarves prior to shooting the film so that he, he, he would know the type of feel that, you know, Argento was going for. And it certainly delivers, man, because it feels like kind of one of these trippy, dreamlike fantasies. And it's because of, you know, the subject matter. Nickelodeon Argento opted to make this movie about a dancer, uh, American dancer named Susie Banyan, who, who comes to Germany to, 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 you know, move to this boarding school where, where some of the best dance is being done in the world. Um... And she, she comes there, and as she gets there, strange things start to happen. You know, one girl runs out and disappears right off, you know, her first night there. She runs, she, as she's coming to the school, this girl's running away. Um, and then slowly there's some other deaths and things that start to happen. And as the movie kind of progresses, ultimately um, Susie and her friend Sarah learn that the, the school is ultimately being run by a coven of witches. Um, and the great thing about Argento's version of this movie uh, is its simplicity in nature. It, it is really just as simple as what I just said. Um, and we get a really, really you know, inspired performance, I thought, uh, from Jessica Harper, who really does a great job of playing like she's in a dream the whole movie. Um, because you know, Susie gets kind of a spell cast on her early on, um, and it forces her to kind of get tired randomly and not have energy at the end of days. Uh, she's kind of very loopy and... Jessica Harbour plays that so wonderfully, um, you know, and she she kind of is in and out of it the whole way as, you know, the witches are doing things, but we never really see what's going on with the witches in, in Argento's version of the film. It's more about kind of following Susie's story and you see these things start to happen. You're like, what is really going on? And we finally get to see the witches toward the back end of the movie. Um, but it does kind of stay from a distance. It doesn't really get into what they're doing at the school. It's just that things are strange that are happening. Um, you know, and like I said, Harper's performance and also Stefania uh, Cassini, who plays Sarah, they kind of are, are your drivers that kind of push you through the story. You kind of just go on this journey with them that you get to the end. You're like, oh, wow, this is what's going on. Um, but the reason that it, 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 it's such a classic in the horror realm is, is not so much because of Susie or Sarah's stories, per se, um, or how much the witches are really in actively physically involved in the movie. Right. We, we know that. 
all the girls have restless nights of sleep. Um, there are different scenes where you can see almost all of them tossing and turning all the time. Um, and that something is clearly going on with the disappearance of the girls, but we never really get into you know, real specifics as to what the driving forces are behind the witches. And I like that, that mystery of it. You're kind of like, oh man, it just kind of all happens is the way, you know, in the way in which Susie kind of figures it out. Um, and I dug that, but the reason the movie is so classic is really Argento's vision. And like I said, those color palettes, you know, that Technicolor color palette that he uses, um, you know, the reds and greens and blues and yellows. I mean, like, bright popping of color in a lot of the scenes set really beautiful, wonderful shots um, that can be eerie and creepy. Um, but it was it was a very different look uh, and vibe as you went to different places. And the hotel, uh, well, it looks like a hotel to me, but the school uh, also has very, very unique uh, look and style to it that I just kind of gave all of this very, like I said, dreamlike feel to it. And then when you take into account also the camera work itself, I mean, the way it kind of moves slow and then speeds up sometimes or or the way the you know kind of freezes sometimes, it's interesting. The camera work is really, really sharp in the movie, um, and it definitely adds to, you know, all the elements that are working well. But the thing that puts this movie over the top and into the world that really gets you to the edge of your seat the whole time, it is the score uh, by Goblin. Holy cow, man. I mean, this is this score is so inventive. Um, it's so creative for a genre back in the 70s where you did not get a score like this. And the score really does. It was funny. I was, <laughs> I was talking to my mom. She's like, what were you watching the other night? Because I, I, heard, I, I heard this music. It was creepy. I was like, yeah, man, it's that original Suspiria. Like, that music is super, super creepy. Um, and the really cool thing is Argento, would blast it. Um, back in the 70s, it was very commonplace to have everybody dub their lines over, and all the lines in the movie are dubbed, which, which I give it a, a bad mark. It gets a demerit. Uh, there's one stretch where the dubbing is so off. Uh, with For this one character, you're just like, oh, man, what, like, so bad. But um, because of all the dubbing, that allowed Argento to blast the score uh, live while they were filming um, to try to build that tension, and it certainly worked um, because the performances feel as tense as you feel. Um, and ultimately, what Argento delivers with Suspiria is a creepy, like a really creepy fantasy. Um, and it just looks beautiful, and the, the, the cinematography is wonderful. Like I said, the color palette is very interesting and adds so much. And then that score, uh, it just takes everything that our actors are doing and our director and our writers are doing and just elevates it so much. This movie was so good, man. I got to the end, I was like, God, man, how did I wait this long to see this movie? This um, it immediately became one of my uh, all-time horror faves. I really, really dug Um you know what Dario Argento delivered uh, with his first real stab at a horror movie uh, with Suspiria. And, and I say stab because you know, you'll watch the movie and you'll see you know some classic elements of probably other movies that clearly influenced um, Argento. You know, things like uh, you know that kind of old school approach to the way you might stab somebody. Uh, so there you go, man. I really dug the 1977 version of Suspiria, but now it's your turn, man. Have you seen the 1977 version, the original version of Suspiria? Um, did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, what you know? What what were you digging? What were you not digging? What made you excited about the new one? Maybe. Um, tell me everything you're thinking, Suspiria, down below. Try to keep it spoiler free. I know it's like you know year, we're well past 40 years. Uh, uh, you know, since the original Suspiria came out. But I want to try to keep this one spoiler free because I feel like a lot of people are probably just starting to check this one out as the new one, uh, like I said, started to get its release this weekend. Um, so there you go, man. That's everything that I think. Let me know everything you're thinking down below. If you've got any spoilers, mark them as such. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe and little bell so you get alerts every time I make a new video. The Seaman Cinema Sit Down. I'm the Seaman, and I'm signing off. Peace! Hey, hey, still here, guys. Well, so is the Seaman, and I'm here to remind you that the fun doesn't have to stop. You can keep it going with just a couple clicks of a button. So make sure you check out videos either here or here. And if you're new and haven't done it yet, please hit that subscribe button over here.